Well, I'd like to read you an excerpt from my new novel, San Miguel. And this features Marantha Waters, a uh, woman of 38 who lives in an apartment in San Francisco, whose husband has convinced her to buy into this island of San Miguel where he will make his fortune raising sheep and selling wool and she will have to be a housewife. She's gone out on a ship, a long journey from Santa Barbara to get to this island, and this is her first view of it. She was out on deck when the island hove into view. Hove, that was the term, wasn't it? From heave, because everything on a ship was constantly heaving, including your stomach. And she saw it as a tan lump marbled with bands of the purest white, as if it were a well-aged cut of beef laid out on the broad blue plate of the ocean for her and nobody else. But it wasn't beef they would be eating in the days and weeks and months to come. It was mutton and turkey from the flock the previous tenant had introduced. And fish, she supposed, because wasn't the ocean here abounding in all species and varieties of fish? But then she never developed much of a taste for fish, aside from lobster, that is, which wasn't really a fish, was it? and she couldn't think of a single way to serve it but baked in a dish till it was dry and tasteless. There was a wind in her face, a cold wind freighted with pellets of cold salt spray, canvas flapping, ropes singing, wind, but it felt good, felt pure, and the tightness in her chest began to give way. By the time the boat came to anchor in the bay below the sole house on the island, the house was, that was theirs now, along with everything else within her purview, the rocks and gulls, the sand dunes careening down the slopes, the sheep that were like scraps of clouds scattered randomly across the distant green hillsides. She was so excited, she was like a child herself, like Edith, who hadn't spent more than twenty minutes below decks the whole way out. Will had warned her that the house was nothing special, a wood-framed sheepman's place, built seventeen years earlier by the new partner in the Pacific Wool Growing Company, Mr. Mills. But that didn't stop her from picturing it in her mind's eye through every day of the past two months. What would it be like? The rooms, how were the rooms arranged? And the views, would Edith have a room of her own? Or would she have to share with Ida? And what of the hired man, Adolf Bierson, whose face she hadn't liked from the minute she laid eyes on him at first light that morning? And Jimmy, the boy who'd been out here looking after things these past months. Where did he sleep? The boat swung round on its anchor so that the island was behind her and she was gazing back the way they'd come, beyond the mouth of the harbor and across the ironclad waves to the mainland that was visible now only as a distant smudge on the horizon. Then they were lowering the skiff, Will scampering round the deck like a man half fifty who hadn't taken mini ball in the saw flesh just below his left hip at Chancellorsville, and yes, she, Edith, and Ida were to go first, along with a jumble of sacks and boxes, with Adolf at the oars and Jimmy to meet them on the beach with one of the mules and the sled to bring them up the long hill to the house. And she shouldn't worry, Will insisted, his big sinewy hands steadying hers as he helped her down the rope ladder to the boat with his eyes on fire and the smell of his breath sharp with the aftertaste of his own excitement. Because today was a holiday and they were going to have the remainder of the afternoon to themselves. I'm not worried, Will, she said, in the instant before she started down the ladder. Not when I'm in your hands. But with the way the wind was blowing, she couldn't be sure he'd heard her. <laughs>